The book First Break All the Rules studies thousands of managers across the globe to identify what separates the great managers from the mediocre ones. And in this book, uh, it was done by Gallup, they discuss what are the different qualities, attributes, and habits of the greatest managers and what do they do differently. So as usual, I have my five key takeaways. The first key takeaway is the best managers focus on employee strengths rather than weaknesses. So the book starts off with a story about a frog and a scorpion, where the scorpion approached the frog asking, can I ride on your back to cross to the other side of the river? Instinctively, the frog said, no, because you might sting me and you're poisonous. So the scorpion responded, why would I sting you? Then we would both die. So the frog gave in, asked the scorpion to ride on his back. And while they were crossing the river, suddenly the scorpion stinged the frog. So the frog was shocked. Why did you sting me? We would both die now. And the scorpion responded, it's in my nature. So the moral of the story is it's very hard to change a person's natural abilities, natural tendencies. So the best managers, rather than molding a person to become somewhat they are not, they double down on their strengths and they help employees become more of who they already are. So for example, if they're detail-oriented, maybe put them in a job role that requires that level of detail. The second key takeaway is how can you maximize a person's strength? One example is Dennis Rodman. He's best known for his rebounding abilities, defense, and helping Michael Jordan and Chicago Bulls win multiple championships. However, due to his controversial attitude, he usually gets suspended an average of 12 games per season. Because of this, what management did is they incentivized him $5 million if he doesn't miss a game and an additional $500,000 if he becomes best rebounder. So they defined clear metrics, clear outcomes of how they can double down on a person's strength. And you can do the same by first identifying what's this person's natural strength. Second is what outcome do you want to achieve as an organization? And third is identifying measurable ways to measure that person whether or not he's achieving the desired outcomes. And lastly, is let the person execute. So those are the ways to how to maximize a person's strength. The third key takeaway is casting is everything. Contrary to popular belief, wherein you can train a person to do well in the role, the best managers don't waste time and they focus on hiring the right person from the very start. So they look at four things. The first one is skills. Do they have the right skills, abilities, competencies to do well in that role? The second one is the knowledge. Do they have the right information, past experience to deliver in that specific role? The third one is willpower. If faced with challenges and obstacles, are they resilient? Do they have the right grit to overcome these obstacles? And fourth one is talent. Do they have the right passions or natural abilities to do well in that specific role. So great managers don't waste time in developing a person, but look for the right person who can hit the ground one running when they get hired. The fourth key takeaway is the best managers spend the most time with the best people. So a lot of managers make this mistake wherein they try to focus, allocate more time with the person who is struggling the most. And because of this, they aren't able to double down on their key people. So the best managers focus on those who are already performing really well and devote more resources, more time, more attention to these people who are already succeeding. It helps the company in general because it maximizes the potential, taking someone who's already great to becoming even more excellent, retain your top talent, and it will actually set the standards for others to emulate and to follow. The fifth key takeaway is don't overpromote people. So one of the greatest mistakes most managers do is they overpromote their employees. So for example, if there's a salesperson doing really well, consistently exceeding his or her quota, they the natural tendency is to promote them to a sales manager. But it's not necessarily true that if they're a great salesperson, They'll be good in leading and managing people. It ends up you know, overburdening that person, eventually leaving, causing him to leave the company. So what the best managers do is they pay their best employees for what they do and love 
and make it rewarding for them to do what they do best. Those are my five key takeaways from the book, First Break All the Rules. Hope you learned a lot. If you like my summary, I do one summary every week. Go to youtube.com, uh, search Paolo Balinas, and you can see a lot, several other summaries, which I try to do every Sunday. So with that, thank you and have a great evening.